Okay, so this is the process of adding a new group policy object that will um, change how UAC behaves and doesn't require administrator logins. So first of all, we're going to open group policy management. We're logged in to the VM on a client server right now, and this is what that will look like. This will be collapsed. We're going to want to open that up. Domains, the client domain, group policy object. We're going to right click and choose new. We'll give that a name and click OK. We'll go ahead and select that. Now what you see here are defaults, details, settings, which we're going to edit in just a minute, delegation, these should not be changed. Only the settings tab will be changed. And in this case we're going to use computer configuration. We're going to do that by right clicking on the UAC configuration that we've just created. Choose Edit, and just like it, see, it shows right here, it's going to be the computer configuration setting, and in our case, we're going to go to Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Local Policies, because it'll apply to this particular machine. Actually, we now want to go down, let me lift, raise this up a little bit, to security options. And we're going to look for user account control, which we can just press the letter U to get down to that area. Now, you'll see these here that say behavior of the elevation prompt. We're actually only interested in this first one right here. Let's look at properties. We're going to define this policy, and as far as this gives us the possibilities, we're going to prompt for consent. Where are we here? We're going to prompt for consent on the secure desktop. Now, the long-handed explanation is right here, and this is the one we want, and we just want it to say permit or deny. We don't want it to log in with credentials and all that kind of stuff. We just want a simple prompt. So let's go ahead and apply this and OK it. Now, even though this one here says by default, if you look at explain, enabled default admin approval mode is enabled. I'm a little uncertain about this because it doesn't say it's enabled. Maybe it's only default when I click one. No, it's not. So this probably is not necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and enable it anyway. Okay, the last thing we've got to do is link this. So we're still in the UAC configuration. Let's back up one. Okay, a little confused by that. So then we want to hit File and Exit. That puts us back here. You think there would have been a uh, save option in that mix. I'm going to just check to make sure that my work is saved. Yes, the work was saved. So the right action is file and exit. All right, the last thing we've got to do, as I say, is to link it. And we need to right click on the domain. Make sure I've got the right one. I do. Okay. And link an existing group policy object select the UAC configuration that we've just created and click OK. Now that you've linked it, it wouldn't have happened until you linked it. You can click on settings. Now you've got some drill downs here. You see where it says show, show security settings, show local policy, show user account control, and there's the two group policies that we just implemented. Done. So now Everything on the group level for the domain itself will behave this way and you only need to implement on the computer that your administrator is actually using, the owner of the business, whoever it may be, um, 
and add their domain account to the administrator group. We're going to show you how to do that now. And to give you an idea on my local machine here, if I edit local users and groups, I'm going to run that. Actually, you can't run it as administrator. It doesn't let you right click on it. So I've been through this before. So you have to go with the, it's a L user manager MSC. That's what it is. Okay. You can right click on that and run as administrator. Okay, so in here, this is on the machine with the user who you want to make sure that they're an administrator. You're going to go into groups, administrators, and add them. You see it's going to be the domain user. So whatever their name is, um, you're going to make sure that it is the domain user. As we have here, not a local user. Whatever their domain account is, add that to the administrator group. Okay, and from that point forward, they'll just get a simple prompt. And when you're done, this is the kind of prompt you should be getting and not this one. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped you. Bye-bye.